is Tristina Dietz Elms here to show you how to make resin bubbles and also how to put resin on book pages. For this project, you want to start out with a stiff surface and level it. So you want to use a wood panel like this or some glass and then a standard level or a button level. With a standard level, make sure that you do it both vertically and horizontally so that um, you're sure that it's all around level. And here I use some sticks and you can use toothpicks as well to make sure that that sucker is level so that the resin doesn't roll off. And these are what some of the resin bubbles look like that you can make on there. That one had vitrail in it to color it and some metallics and then there's a white. And then this clear one is what I'm gonna show you how to make in this video. You see here I have a big bag of them that I keep for different projects. So now cover your surface with, uh, in this case, a piece of Teflon, but something that's non-stick. And then I'm gonna tear off the excess from a book page here and throw that away. And the book that I grabbed to take it out of was from the library. It cost me only a dollar. <laughs> and we're gonna put on that some Pebio Pro Bio Resin, but you can also use the glazing resin. The difference is the glazing resin's a little thicker and the bio resin's a little thinner. So we're gonna be applying the resin with two parts resin and one part hardener. Here I'm gonna be using 20 milliliters of the resin part A. And then next I'm going to use the hardener part B and put 10 milliliters of that into one of these measuring cups. Now the measuring cups came out of that box that I showed you just a second ago. And use a stick to take that and put it into a cup. I just like to use a plastic disposable cup to mix my resins in. So now that they're both in there, you're gonna mix it for 30 to 60 seconds. Make sure that you get from the bottom to the top. And if you are mixing a large amount, put it in a second cup so the bottom becomes the top and you really get it mixed up well. Now we're gonna set this aside for three to five minutes because any bubbles that we've agitated can then come up out of the mixture. Here I'm gonna show you two techniques for putting resin on book pages. The first is you're gonna put a little bit of resin on your book page and spread it around with a stick. This will let it soak into the paper and then it'll give you a nice thin result. And you notice that it's soaking in and making the paper translucent, which I really like that effect. And now you're gonna flip it over and make sure that you rub it around to get both sides. And then that one is finished. Now the other one, we wanna have a more rounded top to it. So rather than using the stick to spread the resin, we're just gonna pour it with the cup. And because that resin is relatively thick, it's gonna encapsulate that page and give us more of a resin bubble page. Now the leftover resin, we're gonna just pour right onto there and give it plenty of room because it is going to spread and that will make our resin bubbles. We're gonna throw that cup away and wipe off the stick. And then we're gonna clean those cups with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol or up to 90% alcohol. When you're finished, you can wash those cups with soap and water if you like. Now you can embellish these pages and here I'm using a little bit of glitter to accent it and the resin will hold on to that glitter. And here I'm using a little mica powder to give it some extra color and shimmer. You can take either the glitter or the mica powder and literally mix it into your resin first if you want to before pouring it, but here I'm using it as an accent afterwards. And these are oh, what I love. They're big flakes of iridescent glitter and I really enjoy putting that into my resin. Now you're gonna wait 24 hours in order for that to fully dry. After that, you can see with the flexibility of that Teflon sheet, you can just pull those pages right off. And the thin one is nice and flexible and you can cut it, or what I like is that you can even tear it. And because of the translucency, you'll be able to use either side. Now the resin bubbles are very flexible when they're first cured. So you can put them on a surface that's not flat 
and leave it to cure for another up to two days and it'll hold that shape. You see now how easily those come right off of that Teflon sheet? I love it. Notice compared to the other page that this is quite a bit thicker. It's flat on the back, but it has a nice dome on the front. Now we're gonna use gel medium, either in gloss or matte, to attach that to our mixed media artwork. Here I have an artwork done with Pebio's liquid oil paints and they're fully cured. And now we're going to audition some of the pieces of our resin pages on that artwork. What I like is that for one, they're fully cured, so it's easy to move them around. And the other is, I really like that they're translucent. Now we're gonna be using some gloss gel medium here because when the background is gloss, I like to use gloss gel medium to attach my pieces. And you can use a palette knife or a brush to put the gel medium on the back of the resin pages. Don't worry if you get some on the front. You see here, I'm just wiping it off with a paper towel. Now you're gonna go ahead and put some of the gel medium on each one of your pieces in order to attach them and then move them around as you like. I like that they're transparent and you'll be able to see underneath them. Oops, now notice that I got some gel medium where I didn't want it. So you can just use a damp cloth or spray a little water on that in order to take it off. And this one, while the gel medium is still wet, I decide that I want to slide it around a little bit. That's perfectly fine. Get it right where you want it, and then rub it all down, and ta-da! Now I also want to put a resin bubble on there, so I'm going to use a little more of that gloss gel medium. And because this is a clear resin bubble, it goes on white, but when the gel medium is fully dried, it'll be clear. And now you can use regular acrylic paints, more resin, collage elements, and other paints right over top of the resin pages. Now this is a piece of artwork that has a some collage on it, some acrylic paint. And we're gonna put the flat side of the large resin bubble with the page in it on there and audition it again to decide where we wanna put it. Here we're gonna put a little bit of the gel medium not only on the back of the resin piece, but some also on the surface. So when you have a large piece, it helps to have a little bit of the gel medium on the surface for it to grip onto as well and I'm patting it down with a cloth. And then you'll notice that I use a brush with a little bit of water to get that excess gel medium that's squished out of the sides off of there. And then you'll leave it for 24 hours to 48 hours to dry. And you'll see that that white will turn into clear. And I'm cleaning the brush and the palette knife just with some water or soap and water. Now after the 24 to 48 hours, it will be clear underneath those resin bubbles and you'll be ready to just put on another layer. Here we're gonna use some markers. I really like the glossiness of the Pebio for artist oil paint markers. So that's what I'm gonna show you first. And this is the chisel tip. It actually comes in four different tip sizes and 18 different colors. And did you see that I could write right on top of the resin with it? Ooh, and the 15 millimeter silver is one of my favorites. Now here is the four millimeter bullet tip. And you'll notice if you need to get it to flow, you can just pump and scribble on a piece of palette paper and that'll get that paint flowing. And here's the two millimeter that I use to go in and do fun detail work. Now, what if you make a mistake and you decide that you wanna clean it up? You can use a little bit of Pebio's odorless medium or another type of mineral spirits, and you only need a tiny bit to go in there and just wipe out what it is that you want to remove. So even after these markers are dry, you can still go in and do correcting with it using that tiny bit of solvent. To clean the brush then, you just mix it in some of the solvent, wipe it off, and use some soap and water. 
On the other painting, we're gonna use Pebio's acrylic markers. The acrylic paint markers come in five different tip sizes and 48 colors. Because they are water-based acrylic paint in a marker, you can simply use water on a brush in order to remove the paint while it's still wet. But once it's dry, it's permanent. When you receive your new markers, you're gonna to need to shake them and then pump them in order to get the color to come down into that white tip. And what's really cool is you get a spare tip in the top. Now this is a metallic marker and that'll add just a shimmery glow to your artwork. And here's a small tip to be able to go in and do some fun shapes. And my favorite, which is the real detailed tip, it's the super small 0.7 millimeter marker. So you can see I can go in there and write with it with the white. Now, if you've decided that you made a mistake, you're gonna need to clean that up on the resin right away because once it is dry, it is permanent. Thanks for watching my resin video and I encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.